Guys, great episode today. Watch time, New York City. Some brand new watches, new releases that we get to show you. Also did a charity golf event. If you want to see the most unathletic golf swing, stay tuned. Guys, we're here at Watch Time taking a look at some of the amazing releases from independent watch brands and some of the incredible brands here featuring their watches. Guys, what you're looking at here are two of the best releases, I think, in the last five years. MBNF Legacy Machine Perpetual Calendar. This is the Evo edition and their new sequential Evo, which is just a one of a kind masterpiece. Absolutely incredible. So I'm here with Cedric from MBNF. Thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. Cedric, how has the show been for you guys so far? It's my second year at this show. And I have to say that it's always such a pleasure. We always have someone at the booth. People are queuing. We are so happy. People are really enthusiastic to see our creation. So it's really a pleasure to be back. Awesome, awesome. Well, obviously, a lot of the time people gravitate towards your more traditional, I guess, watches, the Legacy Machine. How has been the reception of the new uh, release, actually? The, this is the HM10, right? So, so yeah, the there is here. the HM10 that we've done yeah. in, uh, in March 2020. And then the HM8 uh, Mark II yeah. with, that we released in June this year, June 2023. So the feedback so far is extremely positive because this is one of the smallest, lightest HM we have ever made. And on the wrist, it feels, it feels like nothing. So you basically wear it, it, you have the spinning rotor on the top, so it feels a bit like a mad one on steroids. Obviously, we've seen the change in independent watch market, right? So independent brands have come tremendously in the last couple of years. Obviously, you guys being one of them. Are you still seeing that popularity as much as ever before? Or how have things changed in the last, let's say, year or so as the market is coming down? First of all, I think it's, it's well-deserved. Finally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the light was on, on very good brands, yeah. um, but the brands that were already there since 100 years. So I think it's just um, a reward of the hard work that has been um, uh, put into the work uh, uh, of independent watchmakers. So the light is there. That's great. We see that it's, it's, it's still extremely high. The demand is extremely high for all our legacy machine for the HM8 uh, Mark II that we just released. Let's say that it's becoming a bit more normal, but it's still extremely high, which that's, is good. That, well, that's, that's amazing to hear. Now, obviously you guys released, I think, two of the most innovative watches in the Legacy Machine Perpetual, now the Evo edition, and obviously the sequential chronograph. Yep. I guess the hard part for MBNF is like, how do you guys continue to innovate, right? What can we expect from the brand? Well, you know, Max is a creative guy and his brain is nonstop. He doesn't take any break. So when he finishes a project, he goes to the next one. So brace yourself for 2024 and 2025. I'm looking forward to it. Cedric, thank you so much for the My time. My pleasure, anytime. Guys, while we're here, I figured it'd be a good time to show you guys a new watch I just bought. It's a 26315 ST, 38 millimeter Royal Oak chronograph. What can I say? Absolutely beautiful. Bracelet is unlike anything else in the industry. It's what makes the Royal Oak such a distinct blank canvas and the perfect design. Michelle. Michelle from Grupo 4C. Uh, so obviously this is a new novelty. Uh, we've seen this before, obviously the dual, dual uh, balance wheel model, but this one is in a smaller case now in carbon, right? That's exactly right. So this here is now the 42.5 uh, millimeter case. And the double balance hits are sixth invention, and it's probably you know some of the most significant work that we've done in terms of chronometry. So uh, we've explored the tourbillon quite a bit in the past, and with the double balance hit, that's uh, an endeavor to try to get a really strong performance, uh, but without the use of a tourbillon. So basically, you have uh, two balance wheels, both of them inclined at uh, 30 degrees, and they're running independently. Okay, they're coupled to what we call the spherical differential. Um, which kind of splits the difference between the two. So if one is a little bit too fast, the other one's gonna pull it back. And the idea is to have a very stable performance throughout the 72 hours of chronometric power reserve. So we only indicate 72 hours, even though the movement will be running longer than that, because during that time, we have the best performance possible. At the same time, it's a very nice showcase, as always, of hand finish. We really have that, that deep movement architecture where you see the entire invention, you have a uh, black polish bridge for um, the differential system right there, barrel polish on, um, on balance bridges. The entire inside uh, of the case is polished as well, so you have a lot of depth uh, aesthetically as well. Now here with the carbon uh, case, so forged carbon, uh, I think it's only 88 grams, so it's a lot lighter. And with that convex case shape, 
um, it's something that becomes very interesting and very comfortable on the wrist as well. Yeah, absolutely. The ergonomics of a watch like this, it really can be told unless you have the watch on wrist, right? It's, it's just impossible for somebody to say. Now, absolutely. in terms of Grubo Forcey, right, you guys are well known both technical innovation and the finishing of the watch, right? I, I say the best watch I've ever held still to this day, I've handled thousands at this point, is a double tourbillon 30 degree technique, yeah, right? Course. They threw everything in the kitchen sink into that watch, yeah. in my opinion, right? How do you guys find the ability to continue to innovate and push the boundaries, even though you guys have achieved so much already? Uh, so it's interesting, actually over the past uh, three years uh, with our CEO, Antonio Kajit, uh, we're investing heavily, more than more than ever, to keep pushing uh, boundaries and to keep innovating. That's kind of what we're known for, yeah. but we have to stay on top of that. So now we've uh, hired uh, over 40 people over the past few months, and for a year, uh, they're only going to be learning. So it's just onboarding, basically, because it's very difficult to find uh, skilled people that are able to work at this uh, very high level. Our R&D team today is uh, a bit over 22 people, uh, so that's a significant amount of our workforce just for R&D. So we're 140 in total, 22 for R&D, uh, over 20 now for hand finishing alone, and then 20 watchmakers. So most of, uh, of our investment and effort goes into actual watchmaking uh, instead of you know HR and other types of activities or for the craft. Awesome. Well, listen, I appreciate the time. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. I appreciate Pleasure. it. We got our good friend Archie Luxury. You want to be on Gray Market? Sure, I love yeah. Gray Market. You there guys you go. are great. Luxury <laughs> Bazaar. And what, what about what about the watches here today? How are you liking the watches? A lot of be careful. A lot of look, dog brands. Look, I don't know if it's dog brands. You just got to be careful. These are things that you got to be at a certain level to buy because you, you you're not going to get your money back like with a Rolex or sure. you know it's sure, sure. It, it's a different type of market. Yeah. You know you know what I mean? Absolutely. But I love the new Breguet. Yeah. The, the, that's the type, you know, the type 20. Type 20. I don't like the day window. A bit expensive. They more expensive. Yeah, they more the design, I think, of it. I like blank paint. It's a dead it's brand. Only Donny Haynes wasn't a fan. <laughs> I could almost go with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell you what, that's beautiful what he's got on his wrist there. <laughs> AP. <laughs> Yeah. Ron, that's just gorgeous. Oh, absolutely. RG, it's great seeing you. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much. Say hello to Roman. I, I, I thought Roman was here. No, no, no he's not coming up. Oh. He, had a, he had a long night yesterday. Guys, what we have in front of us literally is a museum at watch time. These are some Type 20 Breguets. These would have originally been made for the French military. And these are, to me, aesthetic perfection. These two register, three register chronographs, absolutely beautiful watches that unfortunately Breguet marred with their new release uh, with that ugly day window. I wish they would just get rid of it, go back to this design. I think this is such a pure, aesthetically beautiful looking watch that they really, really need to remake to help really bring the back brand back alive. Because unfortunately, as you can see from the amount of people, they are suffering. Watch time was a great event. Event. I got to see some spectacular watches, but even better were the collectors and the people that I got to meet, specifically people I've been talking to now for years and finally got the opportunity to shake their hand and meet them in person. Jesse, how's it going? Good to see you. Nice to see you at watch time. Uh, second time, right? Yep, second you saw, time. Saw, saw you here last year. Yeah, absolutely. What are you wearing? So this was my grandfather's Datejust. So 116300, the Datejust 2. Bigger size, sportier. Yeah. I haven't taken it off in a couple of months. It's my favorite watch now. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and also including that DB I got from you. Yeah. You actually ended up picking up a DB20, yeah. was it 25 XP steel wheels? It was wheel. the 28 XP steel wheels, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful watch. Are you enjoying it? It's the most incredible watch ever. It's a very big watch, so yeah. it's, I have to go like short sleeves with it, sure. and but it's awesome to wear to school. People are asking, what is that? Yeah, yeah. It's just a fun watch. It's titanium. It's super light. The strap is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's a great watch. Thank you. If you don't mind me asking, how old are you? 15. 15 years old, already into Divot 2. That's really impressive, man. Thank awesome. You. My uncle my uncle got me into it. He has a longer. Yeah. He gave me that watch and a microscope for a couple of hours, and I just I fell in love. Awesome, <laughs> well, listen, Jesse, it's a pleasure well, seeing you. It's a pleasure. You. Thank Absolutely. you. Guys, we're wrapping up our footage of Watch Time New York here. It's been a pleasure meeting all of you. Pleasure seeing so many great watches from great independent watchmakers. Hopefully it'll be just as good next year and I'll see you there. <laughs> Try again. Thank you, Roman Sharf, Luxury Bazaar, for partnering up and hosting this event for Watches for Good. And for the ones who are asking what is Watches for Good, I'm gonna give the mic over to Roman Sharf to explain this wonderful charity. Thank you, Joe, and thank you everybody for coming. Now this charity, uh, is completely 
pay free, i.e. every single penny that goes into the charity goes out to a good cause. When we thought about picking a cause for the charity, a main cause, we decided there will be no cause. And the cause is we're able to take funds that are available with us and we always keep a reserve of funds and immediately uh, throw those funds at an issue that's going on in the world. Big shout out to Joe Bograd and his team for putting this event on for our charity, watchesforgood.org. He could have picked any charity this year. He decided to pick ours. I'm really grateful for that. For now, let's play some golf. Easier said than done. I have never played golf in my life. This is gonna be a long day. Just a little practice. I think I'm getting better. There it is. There it is. Oh! How is it? That was a practice shot. <laughs> what the hell was that, bro? Swing the ball. Like nice. That. Okay. You hit it. Okay. Of course, there's my very unathletic swing, and then there's Adrian's perfect swing. get you there and you just you just put it away you know what I mean it's like an mm -hmm. assist magic johnson starting to get a little cocky so you know our magician cam had something up his sleeve the fuck adrian bro you killed it <laughs> dude what the hell was that <laughs> got him <laughs> yep crushed it what the hell just happened? But where's my actual ball? Of course, the first time was so good, we had to do it again. <laughs> yeah, he does that shit. <laughs> Fing guy. And maybe again. Again, he does that shit. <laughs> God damn. It. This about to be, that was the last one they had. The worst thing you can do to a golfer is just completely kill his momentum. Great time at the golf charity outing with Joe Borger, his team, and my guys. Awesome watches at watch time. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Next week, stay tuned.